Uncertainties, as we have seen before, um, in chemistry labs are used specifically when we conduct experiments using different chemistry lab equipment. So when we conduct these experiments, there would also be experimental errors that are associated with these uncertainties. Uncertainties are technically a form of error because we're not certain about the value that we took when we were measuring specific ingredients. So uncertainties could give us an indication of random versus systematic error. Let's take a look at random error first. Random error, a few examples, um, start, starting with parallax error, is when an experiment misreads. So this is something like using a pipette um, or using a ruler and not really looking at it at the, di the most direct angle. And so you're misreading the value by a couple decimals. It could also be temperature variations in a room. So this means that maybe when you started your experiment, it was 24 degrees. Um, and as the lab experimentation went on during that block, uh, the temperature rose because everyone was moving around um, and more people were coming in to watch the experiments. But you didn't take an account of the temperature changes. So that would also be considered a type of random error. It could also be insufficient data. So this means that um, you're not taking enough trials. So maybe for each experiment, you're only doing, you're only running one trial. And if you're only running one trial, then that data might not be as reliable as you think. And so this is called reproducibility. Random error can be improved by repeating the experiment. This means the more trials you do, the more trials you run, the more accurate um, your results could be, and it, the more it would actually reflect what it should be, right? Um, random error can be caused by a variety of different ways, like what we've seen just now. So if you repeat the experiment, then that reduces the chances of a lot of those parallax errors or temperature variations, et cetera, from happening. 